Okay, my name is Tatiana Farias. I'm from Bahia, Brazil, and I will present uh, our article that we published in 2020. 20, 20. Uh, I'm a federal medical expertise, occupational physician with specialized in psychiatrist, title of a specialist in expertise meeting, uh, a specialist in preventive medicine and occupational medicine, master in medicine and health, research in mental health in the Recise Fundanese, advisor of interdisciplinary uh, academic league of psychiatrists. I'm here with Danton Ferraz Souza, he's a physician and he's one of the author of so the title is uh, BDNF protein and anxiety disorders, anxiety disorders. And an increase, and first uh, I want to, to, uh, to see that this was our first study. Today I will add more recent data in addition to what they were, were uh, anxiety disorders, BDNF, mental disorders in neurobiology and neurotroph theory. An increase in the prevalence of anxiety disorders in individual socioeconomic losses and the growth of multiple individual oh stressors yeah, as that are related to our lifestyles has been observed, which are almost harmf more harmful to one's health and associated with genetic inheritance, among other factors. This reality may contribute to this, the risk of losing neuropsychiatric functions, as well as to the development of psychiatric disorders. Brain neurotrophic factor, BDNF, is one of the most abundant neurotrophin in the human brain. The studies with neurotrophin allowed the introduction of one more hypothesis. Kellogg neurotroph hypothesis that would explain the physiopathology of mental disorders. Knowing the neurobiology of the ADS, ADs, anxiety disorders, as well as its relation to BDNF levels, may contribute to primary preventive actions in psychiatry. The objective of this presentation is to analyze the possible relation between levels of BDNF and AD inside disorders based in the chapter that we published in 2020. The method of this study was a nar narrative review of the literature to help us first to identify trends in the literature of that team. So first, uh, let's see about the epidemiology of inside disorders. This graph shows the prevalence of mental disorders in the world in 2016 from global further of disease, comparing them to each other. Now let's see how they behave between 1990 and 2017. Inside disorders have become a significant public health issue worldwide with individual social and economic losses due to their high prevalence, chronic conditions, and individual disabilities. This reality may contribute to the risk of losing even partially and temporarily neuropsychiatric functions, for example, cognition and memory. According to large population-based surveys, up to 33.7% of the population are affected by anxiety disorders during their lifetime, however. It is difficult to find reliable evidence to demonstrate the evolution of the prevalence. Patients with anxiety disorders are mostly treated as outpatients. They probably receive less attention from clinical psychiatrists and can undiagnosed. See, we can see here the different. An American census conducted between 2019 and 2020, before and during the COVID-19 pandemic, 
demonstrate that the rate of prevalence of ansiety increased three times more in the population, rising from 8.1% to 29.4%. Here we can see that. When the severity, frequency, and persistence of ensial symptoms become inconsistent with the present customs and circumstances, and the anxious reactions caused by the, the behavior to be dysfunction, then these are characterized as the ansia disorders, which present high levels of morbidity, with its, a possible increase in mortality since 6.1% of suicide cases are associated with AD here, the seven. It's the seventh cause of suicide among mental disorders. So the state of anxiety, its traits and ages are differentiated by the degree of impairment and the duration of the anxiety symptoms on the individual. The state anxiety is normally defined as a measure of acute and intermediate level of anxiety. The individual anxiety is a norm, for the individual anxiety is a normal protection, a defense mechanism with an important role in the pre preservation of life. Pathological anxiety constitutes an inadequate response to certain stimulus as a result of its greater intensity and duration. Pathological anxiety paralyzes the individual, not allowing him her to be prepared and face treating situation, differentiating itself from normal anxiety. The effect of anxiety on thought, perception, and the learning process may be quite intense. Biological, the etiology of the anxiety seems to be related to noradrenergic, gabergic, and serotoninergic systems, and the frontal lobe and limbo neurological and mental disorder system. However, studies with neurotrophin gave rise to one more hypothesis that would explain the physiopathology of the mental disorders in general, called the neurotroph hypothesis. Here we can see that. There is increased evidence that development uh, and the mat in matur maturation of neuronal connective are critical components in the physiopathology of essentially all neuro neuropsychiatry disorders. As neurotrophins have been implicated in the brain development of in particular, and in particular in the plasticity and maturation of neuronal circuits, it is understandable that neurotrophin had been popular candidate genes for psychiatry disease. However, there are gaps in the literature on whether anxiety disorders include this explanation. Whereas BDNF theory have mainly applied to depression, more recently variations in genotype and being linked to anxiety-related traits. Nevertheless many, nevertheless, many studies show a shared genetic basis of various subtypes of anxiety and depression in addition to similar pathophysiologic profiles. New data implicate the BDNF polymorphins in, in the pathophysiology and uh, of anxiety and mood disorders in audit. The rapid space of research in the epigenetic modification and mechanisms control BDNF genes expression indicates the progress in BDNF epigenetics. We have widespread applications in diagnose prognose in biomarkers for psychiatry disorders. Individuals with, uh, BDNA, with ANSIA disorders present attentional bias to threatening stimulus, which increase the vulnerability to stress, 
considering these complex disorders due to being influenced by multiple factors that flee from what are called deterministic effects of the genes, therefore making them liable to modulation in interference. Here we can see an important uh, study, relationship of childhood abuse and household dysfunction to main of leading cause of death in adults. The importance of adverse childhood experience. In viral environment factors, the epigenetic factors control the alterations of BDNF gene expression, especially when young. Harmful environment influence while growing can cause a decrease in BDNF expression in adulthood. However, after exercise and a healthy uh, environment, total BDNF in hippocampus increase. This is another study, uh, the psychobiological resilience and vulnerability to anxiety disorders implication for prevention and treatment. Uh, BDNF could have been included as a mediation of the psychobiologic responsible to extreme stress and could have its relationship with resilience or vulnerability to anxiety disorder qualified. Identify the effects, the effects of extreme stress in the development of anxiety disorders should be considered to determine well, whether BDNF can be utilized, utilized to develop and measure of stress-related neurochemical response patterns that will be of predictive value. Patients should receive psychoeducation about their diagnosis, the possible etiology and the mechanisms of action of the available treatment approaches. The treatment plan should include psychotherapy, pharmacotherapy, and other interventions, which should be chosen after careful consideration of individual factors. We will focus on the other factors related about our lifestyle. So see, we can see here a study that uh, treatment of anxiety disorders. And the only time that this article talked about lifestyle, it was this. However, it was found that exercise was less effective than clomipramine and no more effective than relation. Um, and can only be recommended as adjunct adjunctive treatment to standard treatment. So the BDNF uh, is one of the most abundant neurotrophins in the human brain whose functions are neuroplastic, neuroplasticity, uh, neurogenesis, neuronal differentiation, neuronal repair, synaptogenesis, increased telomerase activity. Here we can see two books about this molecular, one published in 2015 and the other one 2019. Studies shows that a neurotrophin hypothesis would explain the physiopathology of mental disorders, where deficit of neuroplasticity would occur and cause atrophy of certain regions of the brain contributing to the development of mental disorders. A meta-analysis that studies the peripheral values of BDNF in different mental disorders with the hypothesis of proving its non-specific obtained results pointing to a valid reduction of BDNF levels in acute case, as well as in the other periods of treatment. In comparing group of patients with healthy control, it is now that in severity of prolonged state of stress, uh, neuroplastic change occur, and well as decrease in the BDNF hippocampus levels. 
knowing the neurobiology of anxiety disorders, as well as its relation to BDNF levels, may contribute to prevent actions. Will BDNF have applications in diagnosis and prognosis as a biomarker of answered disorders? There are two forms of extracellular BDNF, pro-BDNF and mature BDNF. BDNF crosses the blood brain barrier possible through its dosage in peripheral blood, whose serum levels, levels correlate with the levels in the central nervous system. However, this has not become a clinical reality, despite the biologic plausibility due to great heterogeneity between the studies, which present low power of detections of difference in biases of publications and influence of confounded variables, like uh, the kids that do not distinguish between pro-BDNF and mature BDNF, which is a problem because pro-BDNF has an opposing effect as it promotes uh, cell death. And here we can see that BDNF, pro-BDNF, and cell survival and apoptosis. So can lifestyle be a simulator of BDNF production and affect treatment for anxiety disorders? Whereas BDNF theory have mainly applied to depression, more recent variation in the genotype have been linked to anxiety and related traits. Nevertheless, many studies show a shared genetic base of various subtypes of anxiety and depression. Here you can see uh, two important books about lifestyle medicine and about the mind-good connection. Many studies will need to be carried out in this area. And uh, we, uh, as we need to explore our natural resource of mental health. So we can see another study here, BDNF and health food, the role of the good microbiota in dietary interventions of depression and anxiety. And here you can see the relationship between health type diet uh, less depression in anxiety, and in the worst type diet, uh, like inflammatory foods, more depression in anxiety. The other one we can see Western diet is associated with a smaller hippocampus, a longitudinal investigation. And here we can see the difference from the volume of hippocampus between poor diet and good, good diet after four years follow up. The baseline here, four years after. So let's look the, at the relationship between lifestyle medicine pillars and BDNF, believing this to be an effective therapeutic option. BDNF and physical exercise. Effects of exercise on the levels of BDNF and executive functions in adolescent. The protocol for this systematic review and meta-analysis presented in a clear and systematic way for the extraction of information and presentation of re relevant results on the effects of physical exercise on the levels of BDNF in executive functions in adolescent. Another uh, important article in American College of Medicine that say, says that exercise is medicine. And uh, here, uh, uh, the, the importance of this, reduce feeling of anxiety and depression in reality, uh, healthy people and in people with existing clinical symptoms. Another important study, yoga, meditation, and mind-body healthy. 
increase BDNF cortisol uh, 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 weakening response and altered inflammatory marker expression after three months yoga and meditation retreat, retreat. And here we can see the biomarkers pre, pre and post retreat. BDNF three times more after the retreat. Another one, the importance of lifestyle and inflammation. Chronic inflammation in the etiology of disease across the lifespan. And here we can see an important data. Uh, the, the lifestyle, our lifestyle, obesity, uh, diet, uh, disturb sleep, and the consequence, a lot of disease, chronic disease, and depression is one of them. And finally, BDNF, a bridge between inflammation and neuroplasticity. And here you can see the relationship between pro-inflammatory cytokines and BDNF and neuroplasticity. So, conclusion, there, is, there are evidence, there is evidence that is important further studies on the neurobiology of cancer disorder, anxiety disorders, on BDNF protein and its physiology, and the association between both for preventive measures in mental health. Thank you for your uh, attention.